Mr. Vice President, welcome to New Hampshire Roundtable. Glad to join you. It's great to have you. You're obviously in a tight race here in New Hampshire. The polls indicate you're just under Bill Bradley. What are you going to do about that? Well, I think that's healthy for New Hampshire and for the country. And uh, don't get me wrong, I've run unopposed and opposed, and I prefer unopposed. <laughs> but, but I know that even though I might prefer that, this really is a good thing because it has already made it easier for me to see the need to, to make changes in my campaign operation. I moved the headquarters to Tennessee. And we've cut it by 50 percent. Uh, I'm getting rid of some of the, uh, the accoutrements that, uh, of the office of vice president that uh, I was uh, hampered with before. And I'm just having open meetings and talking to people in small groups straight from the heart. And uh, I've been enjoying it, really. I believe you've called yourself an underdog here in New yes. Hampshire. That must have been quite a surprise to you. You were such a strong leader from the outset with the institution behind you of the White House. What have you learned from this? Well, I thought that if he crossed the threshold of credibility, which he did, I thought that it would be inevitable that a two-person race would tighten and narrow. It's like uh, Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola. And uh, um, so it's not a total surprise. And uh, I, I also learned how to be more effective as a candidate and how to connect uh, with the audiences that I address and the people that I talk, to, talk with. And um, in the campaigns I've run in the past, I've gone through a similar learning experience, but it's often been the final four or five weeks of the campaign before I really uh, feel like I'm campaigning as effectively as I can. And due to the competition and due to the closeness of the race, I've been able to get there a year early, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Many people who know you say you're not the stiff wooden character that the press often portrays you as. Why don't you show more of the soft or funnier side to the public? Well, I am who I am, and I can't change that, don't want to change that. And um, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. I, I think I learned from my father years ago a, a little bit of a more formal manner in public, but I think as I get older it's easier for me to to be in large groups the same way I am with my close friends. And, I, and that's a, a better and easier way to, to campaign also. One of the things that really interests me about you is your relationship with your father, the former Tennessee Senator Albert Gore. I believe your father wanted you to be president, had ambitions for you. Some say that you're running more for him than for yourself. Is there a grain of truth in that? No, none, none, none whatsoever. And in fact, um, uh, neither of my parents, who've been described as uh, ambitious on my behalf, neither of them ever uh, tried to encourage me to go into politics. In fact, both of them were surprised when I did, as my wife was. But uh, she helped me win that race, and it was uh, the beginning of the last uh, 23 years of public service. Now that you're working on this more accessible image, may I call you Al? <laughs> you, can, you know, Paul Simon wrote <laughs> a song with exactly that title. So uh, feel free. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. Glad to do it.